What's up, everybody? Hope you all had a great day. Getting into this episode of GH, I enjoyed this episode um very much. I enjoyed the shit out of it. Like I said, the nurses' ball is like always one of my favorite times of the year. Um, I love the scenes with Valentina and Anna. Lucy was working my damn nerve. I'm like, girl, the way she was yelling in the living room, like she was just hollering and stuff like that. Valentina and Anna, the way they ran up in there when they thought she was in trouble. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. And I loved how Valentine was so sarcastic where when she was like, oh, I'm, I'm just upset that I can't be at the ball. He said, yeah, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, like he's, he was being such a sarcastic ass with her. Um, and I don't blame him because he was so fed up with her. But I did love that little moment between him and Anna when they were um, dancing and fantasizing that they were in a ballroom together and he wrote songs for her and stuff like that, singing it to her. I love that moment. That was such a beautiful ass moment between them. And of course, Lucy had to interfere. I'm like, oh my gosh, she had to interrupt the moment. I'm like, Lucy, go to your bedroom and go to bed, okay? They trying to, you know, have a romantic evening, so to speak. And it was gorgeous. I loved every second of it. Um, I'm glad Lucy finally fessed up to them about her going to Port Charles and stuff like that to see Maxie about the ball. I'm glad because they needed to know because now they have no choice but to get the hell out of that, you know, safe house. They should have been out of that safe house. I don't understand what took so long for Sonny to get them a new safe house. Like, he got a million of them. Um, they should have been moved immediately because um, Lucy compromised everything. And that's what Lucy don't understand. She's expendable to Victor. You know what I'm saying? Victor was already making plans. He was like, you know what? I want Anna and Valentine to stay alive because he got unfinished business with them. But he pretty much told his men, like, you killed Lucy. <laughs> he didn't give a damn. He said that witch could go. And that's that's what irritated me about Lucy because I'm like, she don't understand how this works. Like, you are expendable. He will get rid of your ass. You know what I'm saying? Victor didn't have no deep tie to her. You know, no deep connection with her. You know what I'm saying? She was just a piece of ass to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was just a lay. And he ain't even get none of that. So the mere fact that that's all he thought about when he thought about her and the fact that he didn't get no booty, he, he, you can go. <laughs> Victor has no problem killing your ass. He ain't get none of that either. Please. Um, maybe if you would have gave up the draws, he, he might he might have, you know, kept you around. You know what I'm saying? But she ain't give up the, you know, she ain't give up the cooter. So you got the role. But that was such a risky move on her part going back to Port Charles. Like, that was just so dumb. And, I, you know, now she done put all of them in jeopardy. And I couldn't believe it because when Valentine came out and that little laser thing was on his chest and that shot rang out, I said, oh, hell no. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> I said, who they shoot? <laughs> it better not have been Valentine they shot. I don't want to see none of them get shot. But I'm like, Lucy, I mean, you could take one in the shoulder or something because you, you've been fucking up. I'm just saying. But I hope somebody, you know, got the Victor's men or something like that. Or maybe Sonny has some people, maybe Drew. Well, Drew at the ball. But they all at the ball. But I hope that they had some type of security or men stationed there or something just in case Victor made a move. I would hope so. Or Robert maybe had some people there. Um, something. Because they were just some sitting damn ducks up in that house. As soon as they popped their little heads out, boom, boom. I'm like, we ain't got no backup? <laughs> the hell? Get us some backup. Um... So anyway, moving on from that, I love when the nursing staff do their uh, routine and stuff like that. I always love it. And I'm just so sad. It makes me even sadder because Epiphany used to always perform with the nursing staff. And it's sad that she's not here this year. You know, she's not going to be here to perform anymore. Um, that just, you know, a lot of what goes on with that hospital, it just hits hard. You know what I'm saying? That Epiphany really is gone because it's like, damn. You know, you're never going to hear her sass and her putting people in a place and her performing with the other nursing staff at the at the uh, nurses ball. Like It's just it really hits you. You know what I'm saying? Like she's gone. It's like, damn. Um, but I think they did a wonderful job. Um, it was good seeing TJ up there performing with them and stuff like that. They did a hell of a job. I enjoyed every second of it. Um, and I did love the little tribute that um, Liz did on stage for Epiphany. I thought it was beautiful. 
Um, and I definitely agree with Sunny. Like, Epiphany will put you in your place. You know what I'm saying? She was no nonsense. You know, she could put people in their place and not give a damn. And she gave people tough love, but that's the key thing that was in there. It was still love. You know what I'm saying? It was just tough. You know, she just told people what they needed to hear. She didn't sugarcoat. And I'm going to miss her so much. And I think the tribute to her was so beautiful. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. I thoroughly enjoyed the performance by Trina and Jocelyn and then the, they killed it. Trina, Joss and the rest of the ladies on stage, they fucking killed it. Oh my God. They, they did a phenomenal job on that stage. I was feeling the song. I was, you know, boom, 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 boom. I was feeling that shit. And the look on Spencer face when he saw his lady up there performing, he had the biggest Kool-Aid smile. I said, that's right, Spencer. Your lady talented now. She gorgeous and she got talent and she got brains. You got a winner. Um, they killed it. They rocked it on that stage. And I am so freaking happy that her and Spencer got a chance to talk because we finally got some some resolution here. Like Trina and Spencer are officially out of the friend zone. They are officially a couple. I'm like, it's about damn time. Oh my goodness. I'm mad Sonny had to interrupt the shit. When they was about to kiss and stuff like that, here comes Sunny in a row. I'm like, Sonny, you could fuck up a wet dream. Like, go sit down. Like, we've been waiting on this kiss. Go sit your ass down somewhere. Like, this our this our moment. Like, Sonny, go find you something to do. Go knock up Nina. Um, you know, go do, do go do something. Go flash your dimples at the nurses or something. Why you gotta mess up a good moment? Um, I don't know why Sonny went to. Spencer anyway about Victor come like Spencer is not gonna tell Sonny much about Victor at this point like Spencer is in league with him because Victor is a means to get him whatever he wants you know like he want that kid so Victor is gonna get him that kid um but Victor definitely up to something too because he talking about taking somebody out of town with him and I'm like who you about to snatch up <laughs> who you taking um but yeah, I was feeling that moment between Trina and Spencer. I was super happy about it. I said, it's about time. They are a couple officially. It's about damn time. Let the games begin. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. Curtis, I, I totally understand. Curtis didn't want to talk to Nina about his marital issues and where he stood with his wife. Like, I get it. You know, the nurse's ball is not really where people want to talk about their personal drama. I, I totally get it, but you could tell like he's not over it because even I seen the way he kept sneaking looks at Portia and stuff like that, um, especially when Trina was performing the way he kept looking at Portia and whatnot. He still want her, which is obvious, but I feel like after the nurse's ball is over, he need to talk to his wife like they need to figure this out. You know what I'm saying? Like how to move past this, like get some type of resolution because I, I he has every right to be pissed at her he definitely does and i'm definitely happy that he's been giving her that same energy he's been giving jordan because i feel like you know what's good for the goose is good for the gander but at some point you do have to have this conversation and figure out like okay where do y'all go from here you know is this something that can be resolved is this something you can move past is it salvageable you know what i'm saying can we save the marriage you know because Curtis got to realize, too, you can't keep running for marriage every time somebody lies to you or disappoints you. I'm like, that's marriage. It's hard work. That's why they say in the vows for better or for worse, because sometimes worse is bad as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't keep bailing out on your wife every time they piss you off or they do something you don't like. And that's the problem. He does not try hard to fight. You know, he expects the other he expects the wife to fight. And I that's what pissed me off. The last time when he had that conversation with Jordan, oh, why you ain't fight, you know, so hard for us, motherfucker, why you ain't fight? <laughs> he ain't fight at all. Like, shit, you can't fight with somebody that don't want to, you know, get in the ring and fight with your ass back. I'm just saying. So hopefully this time around, he learned from his mistakes and he actually tries to fix this with Portia. I hope so. But I mean, if they don't fix it at the nurse's ball, I hope that they at least talk maybe, you know, the day after or whatever. But I think it's time to, you know fix this hopefully you know we need resolution um i am so glad molly and tj told jordan that they were trying to have a baby because she noticed that they weren't drinking and she was looking at them like what the fuck going on with y'all why y'all not drinking so i'm glad they told you know they clued her in that they're trying to for a baby and stuff which i think is pretty dope 
Jordan does not look like a grandmother. I'm just saying, like, she do not look like she about to be nobody granny. She don't even look like she's the mother of somebody TJ's age. Like, Jordan is just gorgeous. Like, I'm, I hate that she's single. I really do. Cause I think she needs to find somebody. You know, don't get me wrong. People don't need nobody, but it's good to want and have someone. You know what I'm saying? Um, Someone to share your day with, someone to share your life with, somebody to travel with, somebody, you know, to come home to every day. You know what I'm saying? Cook dinner for, you know, go out to dinner. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's fun. It's a beautiful thing. And I think that she deserves that. You know, your life shouldn't just consist of work, work, work. You know what I mean? So hopefully they find somebody for Jordan. I really wish they would have brought Portia brother back for her. I think that would have been dope. And I think it would have made Portia head explode. It would have made for a lot of awkward ass moments. And I think the storyline would have been hot if it was Portia's brother with Jordan. I think it would have been dope. Especially walking on the red carpet with him and stuff like that. Taking photos. The police commissioner with this new man. That shit would have made headlines in, in, the, in the press in Port Charles. I'm just saying. It would have been hot. Um, So moving on from that. Matt seeing them running around chasing around some damn llama that's messing up the tables. I'm like oh my god. Like, what the hell y'all need a llama for on this show? Like, what? what? A llama? And the, the damn llama just tearing up the food table? I'm like, get get that llama up out of there. <laughs> get it out. Um. So, anyway, moving on from that. Link is such a... Ugh, he is such a creep. Like, you could see how uncomfortable Blaze was when he was in her dressing room. I am so happy BLQ showed up when she did. Because I would not leave him around no female absolutely not he's a dog like he just ugh. every time you're around him it just looked like you know he just walking a walking flea like ugh. you know and i totally understand why blaze is keeping this whole thing hush hush because he definitely sexually harasses her and you know i'm glad blq was there you know just letting her know like listen if you want me to from now on i'll go to every meeting that you have with him i'll go with you i think that was a dope offer and i think blaze should take her up on that she should not be left alone with him um and i get i get why blaze doesn't want to make a fuss and she keep walking around like she fine like nothing's bothering her i get it because she's a woman in the music business you know what i'm saying she's a woman period in the workforce, you know, don't matter what career you have, where you at, it, it is known that if a woman speaks out against a guy, they're labeled as difficult, they're blacklisted, you know, from whatever career they're in, you get blackballed. So I get why she's trying to keep quiet, you know what I'm saying? Because she just wants to do music, you know, that's what she loves, and she's not trying to make this into a thing that will blemish her career, you know, but I do feel like she needs to speak up. You know what I'm saying? Because if she speaks up, people don't understand. When you speak up, it it gives other people that, that's been through with what you're going through the courage, you know, to speak up as well. And we could get some of these predators off the street because Link is a predator. You know what I'm saying? And he preys on women, including Blaze. You know, like he's definitely preying on her. And now he's starting to try to prey on Jocelyn. Because he saw her performance and he told me, oh, I can make you a star. I can make you huge. And I'm glad Jocelyn was not interested. She was like, no, mm -mm. she said, I'm not trying to be in the music business. Let me tell you something. If Link tried anything with Jocelyn, he wouldn't have to worry about Sonny, Jax, Michael, nobody. Carly would handle that because you know how Cujo do. Carly would take a chunk out of his ass. Carly would not stop until he in the ground. So Link might want to <laughs> move away. I'm just saying, get away from Jocelyn because it ain't she ain't the one. If you know who her people are, you might want to back your ass up. I'm just saying. Um, but honestly, I really wish BLQ didn't sign that NDA. I really wish she didn't because now she can't legally speak out against him. You know what I mean? Like, I really wish she didn't do that. You know, and I get Chase's anger towards her, but it's like... Now is not the time to chastise her. You know what I'm saying? It's really not. Chase need to calm that down. Um, and I'm also glad BLQ was there to, you know, interfere, run interference when he was talking to Jocelyn. Like, BLQ was on Link's ass at this point. Like, she's not leaving him alone with no woman. <laughs> and I don't blame her. And I'm happy that she's not. Um, so, anyway, moving on from that. I don't know why... 
Elizabeth was thanking Finn, talking about, oh, thank you for the save on the red carpet. What did he, what did he save? Like, was there a missing scene I didn't see? Because I'm like, what did he save? I hate how they be trying to make Finn her knight in shining armor when she doesn't need one. Like, I'm just saying, she didn't need saving. Not at all. So, Finn need to go sit down somewhere. I totally get where he coming from, though. As far as Chase, you know, asking him about him and Liz and stuff, like, I would be ignoring that question, too. Like, Chase need to go mind his business. <laughs> I would have told him, stay out grown folk business. Like, you don't need to know, you know, what's going on with me and her. That's that's a me and her thing. That's, that's none of your business. You need to go figure out what you need to go do. You know what I'm saying? Like, mind your business. And before I forget, yeah, Sonny did interrupt Spencer when he was trying to explain, um something to trina but jocelyn was the one that interrupted the kiss though i'm just like all these interruptions let them folk kiss so anyway um sam you know she was trying to i wish that they would have something for sam to do i really do like her just popping up at the nurse's ball not really having nothing to do her talking to cody i'm just like give her a storyline like in my opinion i feel like sam should have been a part of the victor storyline as a pi she should have been helping anna you know try to take down her uncle I'm just saying she should have been. I feel like she definitely should have been a part of that. Um, you know, she is basically a member of the Cassidine family. Well, not even basically she is, you know what I mean? So I think it would have been nice if she was a part of it, you know, it ain't like she like Victor ass anyway. So why not help try to take him down? You know, he did kidnap her baby daddy. Like Victor caused a lot of issues in her life. So why not try to help take him down? I think it makes sense for, you know, Sam to have been a part of it. Um, I will say, I am glad that Cody got up and, you know, Gladys's face about what she's doing to Sasha. You know what I mean? Like, threatening to tell Sasha about her stealing her money, basically, you know, to pay off her gambling debts. I'm glad that he confronted her. Because at the end of the day, what she's doing is dead-ass wrong. Like, this girl has been through a lot. She lost her son, she lost her husband, and now you're stealing from her? You know, gambling with her money and her estate? Like, come on now. Um... As much as I feel bad for Sasha, I want her to find out what Gladys is doing. And I, because I feel like once she finds out, I think maybe it'll help Sasha get her strength back. You know what I'm saying? And not be so naive to people and, you know, really like pay attention to people and, you know, get a backbone again and, you know, stand up for herself. You know, I think it's time, you know, like she's always going to grieve, you know, Liam. She's always going to grieve him. She's always going to grieve Brando. The grieving process is never ending. But, I want her to get back strong, you know, and take back control of her life, you know, and get out that damn conservatorship and kick Gladys to the curb. You know what I mean? That's what I'm ready for her to do, because I think it's time, you know, for her to get back on that horse and ride again, you know, get back to deception, handle business, you know. So anyway, that was pretty much the whole episode. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought, and I will see you all later. Peace.